Hello and welcome to the fourth update of the Solicitous Solicitor. We have a full complement of visitations today and we will be starting with Brenda Walker. Oh, poor, poor, poor Mr Tuttle. Did you know I was one of the last living souls to spend time with him? Mm -hmm. Well, Mr Tuttle, Mr Swarthmore and I were working late on contracts, you see. Well, that's why I took the day off. When I found out about the news, I was shocked. Shocked. Shocked! What contract were you working on, Miss Walker? Oh, I wouldn't know, would I? I mean, all I do is type, type, type. <laughs> Never read a word of it. <laughs> no, Mr. Tuttle, or should I say poor Mr. Tuttle, asked me to stay late to help with some last-minute revising. Well, Mr. Swarthmore chipped in and we got the job done. Where were the contracts going? Oh, I wouldn't know, would I? No, well, it seems a bit unusual, but Mr. Swarthmore the envelopes himself and handed them directly to Mr. Tuttle. Yes, yes. The whole thing was very hush, 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 you see. You were there alone with Mr. Swarthmore and Mr. Tuttle? Oh, yes. <laughs> Imagine me alone with those two handsome men. Of course, Mr. Swarthmore is a bit intimidating, but he is a bachelor. <laughs> Did anyone else enter while you were there? Yes. No. And then we left at 11.15 on the dot. Well, I know, because Mr. Tuttle made a joke about my returning home before midnight so I wouldn't turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> he is, or should I say, was, a very charming man. Poor Mr. Tuttle. <laughs> Mr. Swarthmore was very keen to help out. Anyway, let's go and find Whitney Cartwright. Mr. Cartwright has been with us since yesterday, remaining in his room the entire time and consuming not much more than the decanters of whiskey we have sent to his room. I'd be careful going in to see him if I were you. <sighs> Mr. Cartwright, I've come to ask you some questions about the murder of Melvin Tuttle. What did you say? The murder of Melvin Tuttle? Yes. Can you tell me why you left the firm's offices so suddenly on Tuesday? I, I received a note. It was very distressing. Everything she needs has Mrs. C. Furs and jewels and ever M.T. While the husband works, the wife will play and thus runs the world away. <laughs> I was completely blind to it, of course. All the hints I had seen but did not recognize became clear. I was so wrapped up in my work. I, I went home to speak with my wife, but she was out. The longer I waited, the less courage I had to face her. And I somehow ended up here. Does my wife know of Tuttle's death? Yes. She said she loves you and will make it up to you. Perhaps we can make it up to each other. <laughs> yeah. Um, good luck with that one. Now we will visit Margaret Porter. I suppose everyone would say that Melvin Tuttle was immensely charming. Perfect manners, perfect dresser. Perfectly eager to please. Why, every young woman he met was absolutely swept away by him. He was just perfect. And what would you say, Mrs. Porter? I would say he was perfectly nauseating. The man was more calculating than a mathematics table. Why do you suppose Mr. Tuttle was raised to the executive level? That baffles me more than life itself. But I do know that Mr. Swarthmore and Mr. Cartwright would have jointly made that decision. If anyone had asked my opinion, which of course they never do, I would have recommended promoting Mr. Diggs. He was an excellent solicitor who produced outstanding work for over 11 years. Am I to assume that Mr. Tuttle's work wasn't up to snuff? No, he was industrious, but thoroughly unexceptional. How did Diggs and Mr. Tuttle get along? Well, their relationship was quite strained. But who can blame poor Mr. Diggs being passed over for that promotion and then no, I, I shouldn't gossip. Scuttlebutt is perfectly acceptable under the circumstances, Mrs. Porter. 
Well, Mr. Diggs was in love with Miss Spring, who was in love with Melvin Tuttle, who was in love with every woman. Even, I believe, Mrs. Cartwright. Mrs. Whitney Cartwright? Yes. He used to escort her to various society functions at the request of Mr. Cartwright. In fact, just yesterday I posted a letter to her from Mr. Tuttle. Did you post anything else of interest? No. Just contracts, contracts, contracts. Five to textile firms in Germany, one to August Heathcliff, four to textile firms in Manchester. It was a most hectic day, not even counting Mr. Tuttle's dropping over. Next up will be Alice Spring. <laughs> Uh, I arrived at the building a little before nine o'clock yesterday morning. Mrs. Porter and I rode the lift together to the fourth floor. Mr. Tut. <laughs> there, there, Miss Spring. I know how difficult this must be. Melvin was in his office. While Mrs. Porter made tea, I went in to see him. It sounds as if your relationship with Mr. Tuttle was more than professional. <laughs> We'd been seeing each other for eight months, but he ended it last week. I was going to return this little gold locket that he gave me, but he wouldn't hear of it. Now it's all I have left. Did he tell you why he ended it? He'd fallen in love with another woman. What did you do after you saw him? Wept a bit. Then returned to my desk where I remained there and... <laughs> oh, buck up, Miss Spring. Sometimes a relationship is what happens when two people are waiting for something better to come along. You'll have your day. I just know you will. <laughs> wow, Watson. Our last visitation from the detectives will be to, will be to August Heathcliff. Mr. Heathcliff, I understand that Sloane, Swarthmore and Cartwright has been preparing contracts for your textile business. What's going on here? Those contracts were to be kept highly confidential. And they shall continue to be, sir. I'm only interested in how the firm handled the negotiating and execution. Hmm, well, suppose there's no harm in that. Some eight months ago, Sir Sidney Sloane undertook the negotiations. Mr. Cartwright drew up the contracts. This whole thing surrounds a top-secret textile merger, which is more than I should mention. My lips are buttoned. I would appreciate that, Dr. Watson. I dealt exclusively with Mr. Cartwright throughout the contract stage. Mr. Swarthmore stepped in at the final hour, which I did find a bit surprising. His alterations, however, had no material effect on the final documents. That contract, as I said, is highly confidential. I would appreciate it if you did not read it. I have no intention of reading it, sir. But I would like to keep the envelope, if you don't mind. Not at all. Uh, Mr. Holmes adores scented stationery. Oh. I wonder just what scent was that was on that envelope. We are now going to send the Irregulars off to the Pharmaceutical Society. That's useful information to know. And that is that for now. I will see you again in a couple of days. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye bye.